Our first guest is Greg Chip, talking uh, about the lived experience. He's now the Director of Drug Policy Australia, which is a registered charity. He has a long and glorious history of activism in this field, knows as much about where we are, where the law reform might go, where we've been and where we're going as anybody, and I'd like you to invite him to welcome him, I'm sorry, to the microphone today. Thank you, John. That was a heartfelt introduction and uh, does remind us uh, of what we're here to uh, talk about, which is the damage done by drugs, but also the damage done by uh, harsh and inhuman laws. I'd like to welcome you this evening to discuss one of the most fundamental, emotive and divisive issues of our times, namely the war on drug users. I believe drug policy is one of the most significant social justice and human rights issues of our time. I don't think there's any other way to paraphrase the importance of drug policy in Australia that does permanent harm to our young people, our families, and to the very foundation of civil society. As John said, Drug Policy Australia is a registered charity, something that I organise because of my passion for this issue, which will become apparent as I reveal a little bit of my personal story as, 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 as uh, the talk proceeds. But we are a health promotion charity registered with the Australian Charities and Not Profit Commission advocating to make drugs a health issue, which means reassessing the criminalisation of drug users. And I stress drug users, not drugs. It's drug users that the war on drug targets. I remember a discussion with my father when I was 15. It was like the discussion that many parents have with their children about drugs, except one factor which I'll get to later. Let me paint a picture. I was a bookish kid, interested in politics and philosophy, and my father was a religious man. Not in the traditional sense, but he believed in God, believed in right and wrong, and in a good life. As a young person coming of age at the tail end of the 60s, I was interested in drugs. In actual fact, I was bloody fascinated. Like kids today. It's a part of modern culture. Dad, as a concerned father, was interested in me avoiding drugs. We discussed the very issue we're here to talk about tonight. Namely, what's the best way to ensure people live a healthy, happy lifestyle and fulfil their potential? And isn't that what we want for ourselves and our children and why we want to keep them safe from addiction? And I mention that up front because hard prohibitionists and people who want to reform the law have that single aim uh, in focus. It's just a different way of approaching it. And that's the way policy develops and, and political discourse uh, develops. We agree on the ends and then we discuss how we're going to do it. I won't canvass the arguments with Dad, but for size to say we disagree. Dad's position was simple and eloquent, that life is so beautiful, so why should one blunt the life's pleasures and sully this exquisite gift of life by being stoned? On the other hand, I argue the case that life was for living, and like most young people, I wanted to experience everything. I also put the case that it was my right to put into my mind and body what I chose. I said I was a bookish kid, and those that know the reference there, that's from uh, John Stuart Mill, which I read when I was 14 years old and have been inspired by ever since, a libertarian philosophy, which is a lost plank of this uh, argument to do with drugs. As it trans transpired, I didn't heed Dad's advice. I um, stand here as one of the eight million otherwise law-abating Australians who have willfully defied the law using an illicit substance during their lifetime. I'm one of the seven million Australians over the age of 14 who have used cannabis in their lifetime. But I make the point, so have three of the last Australian prime ministers. And look, I'm one of the two million Australians that have used cannabis in the last 12 months. And I stand here uh, proudly standing with those uh, Australians that regularly use uh, uh, recreational drugs, uh, which I rarely partake anymore as an old bugger. You, you don't seem to have the enthusiasm, and I have other passions. 
but there you go. But I did enjoy cannabis uh, almost daily for 40 years. It wasn't without negative consequences, including it affected my studies. I certainly would not encourage others to do as I have done, but it was a choice I made freely and without regret. I've used psychedelic drugs sparingly, but with relish. My occasional use of LSD, mushrooms and ecstasy sometimes provided transformational experience of a personal and spiritual significance. Other times it was just bloody good fun. I also used narcotics, including heroin, cocaine and amphetamines. Although at times I enjoyed the pleasure and relief they offered, at other times I've suffered addiction, despair through their abuse. The drug laws did not stop me from becoming an addict, nor did the drug laws help me overcome my addiction, but rather were an obstacle to my recovery. I'm one of the hundreds of thousands of Australians who have been charged with drug offences over the last 60 years, hundreds of thousands of Australians. I'm unapologetic for my drug use. I'm one of the millions of Australians that say no to the laws that prohibit the use of psychoactive substances for pleasure. And I'm one of the millions of Australians that will never stop taking illicit drugs simply because it's against the law. And let me say that again, I'm one of the millions of my fellow countrymen that will never stop taking drugs. I raise these facts, not in defiance, but to highlight to lawmakers as our representatives, it's their duty to listen to the people with lived experiences. I speak on the half of the disenfranchised who have used and will continue to use drugs, regardless of the law. This is my message. Australia's drug laws are not only unenforceable and futile, but a source of untold suffering and persecution of vulnerable people and members of society. And they're the lifeblood of criminal net networks needed to distribute those uh, illegal products. The current drug laws in Australia are unenforceable. And here's the thing, any attempt to enforce them simply causes more harm to society and personal misery than the drugs ever could. And I certainly don't mean to encourage others to do as I've done, but urge lawmakers, of which we have a couple here tonight, I'd like to acknowledge Tim Reid from the Greens Party and of course Fiona, uh, who are on side with this debate, but there are so many lawmakers aren't. But I'd like to urge lawmakers to appreciate that enforcing the drug prohibition has never get negative consequences often suffered by, the, suffered by the most vulnerable and marginalised members of society. No government anywhere has ever succeeded in stopping young people taking drugs or taking risks. All they have achieved with drug laws is to greatly heighten the harm to society and the personal risks of taking drugs. And hence we have the national tragedy of seven young people dying at music festivals this year, um, 1,700 people dying of an overdose in Australia. That's one every five hours. Um, you know, it's just not acceptable. And according to, and I'll just try and put this in perspective, according to the current uh, Crime Commission, illicit drug reports, a uh, government survey, um, uh, there were 72,000 Australians arrested for cannabis this year. Again, these figures were sort of figures, figures. 92% um, of those figures, about 65,000, 68,000, were for possession only. So we're not talking Mr Biggs. This is the tragedy of these drug laws. They don't get the heavy hitting dealers, they get the users. And if you're an indigenous background using cannabis, you don't get the discretionary warning. Uh, you get a criminal conviction and dragged into this criminal system. And before I move on, I just want you to imagine for a moment like we did at primary school or at PE class, where you'd put your hand on the person next to you, um, meaning that's about a metre. Well, 70,000 people, and I want you to picture this, there's a line of people, ordinary people, Australian people, from here to bloody Geelong. Now, if that doesn't con to defy common sense, it's a, a, an MCG full of people on a Saturday afternoon. Um, and it's, it, it, it really is bizarre that it's come to this in Australia. In Australia, we're ratcheting up these cannabis laws with these welfare laws, uh, drug driving laws, a test for, 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 for 
skerrick of cannabis in the system, uh, not impairment. And history demonstrates uh, enforcing unjust laws results in contempt for the rule of law, for the police and the entire administration of justice. My late father, Don Chip, a formal federal minister for customs with the responsibility for the national drug laws, was right when he said, no government can stop young people from using drugs. That's the job of parents. It may be your child, your brother, your sister, your neighbor who experiments with jug, drugs. The harsh truth is that drugs laws affect us all by putting our children at risk of losing their future through a criminal conviction or even their life from a tainted batch of black market drugs. There's no authority on earth, like politicians, police or loving parents that have ever been able to stop young people taking drugs. The galling truth is that all the government can do is reduce the harm by making those drugs safer. I implore drug rate, uh, 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 lawmakers Australia-wide to repeal the criminal laws prohibiting drug, drug use and replace them with administrative controls, much like the regulations that manage the risks of alcohol, tobacco and pharmaceutical drugs. This should be balanced with an appropriate taxation that we spend on education and rehabilitation services that those who succumb to pro problematic drug use can get the help they need it. I put this case on behalf of all Australians who have been persecuted prosecuted, demeaned and vilified for drug use and for the many who have lost their freedom and their lives pursuing an activity that should not be a crime. In conclusion, or in, in conclusion I just want to say, in hindsight, with the wisdom, wisdom of personal experience and age, I now can see that my father was right. Life is too short too precious to squander on being stoned all the time. But so was I right in the belief that the law that criminalised people for using drugs is counterproductive and ultimately doing more harm than the drugs could ever do. I pose this question, is there a better way? Thank you.